For years, Europe wanted to work with China. Now Europe is waking up to the threat China poses, but Germany still wants to do business at the expense of its own security. John Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Incogni. You probably know that companies are collecting your personal data, but you may not realize just how many. Dozens, maybe hundreds, most of which you've never heard of, and you have no idea what they're doing with it. Incogni helps stop them. I'll explain more at the end. So a lot of people in Europe really believed peace and democracy would flourish if China was integrated into the global economy. A lot of people in Europe also believe mayonnaise is an appropriate dipping sauce for french fries, so maybe we shouldn't take their opinions too seriously. European leaders spent decades pushing for closer economic ties with China, saying that China should not be seen as a risk, but an opportunity. But things have changed since then. The invasion of Ukraine proved that authoritarian regimes can't be trusted. Who knew? Next, you're gonna tell me that you shouldn't eat raw chicken or feed chocolate to dogs. How is anyone supposed to keep track of all this obscure knowledge? Now, Europe wants to reduce its reliance on Russia, as well as China. Europe had been taking a harder look at China even before Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Maybe it had something to do with China's intellectual property theft and unfair trade practices. Since 2019, the EU has officially regarded China as a partner, an economic competitor, and a systemic rival. So they're frenemies. No wonder the world is so dramatic. Countries are basically teenage girls who act friendly to each other's faces, but talk trash behind their backs. But the EU's foreign policy service says Beijing should now be thought of primarily as a competitor that is promoting an alternative vision of the world order. No kidding. I've been warning about the Chinese Communist Party even before it was cool. Not to brag, but most of the things I do aren't cool. Yet. Competitive yodeling will go mainstream. You'll see. Many, like the EU's foreign policy chief, recognize that European nations have to avoid creating new economic dependencies. But EU leaders are far from united on that front. Germany stands out like a sore thumb because it's so dependent on the Chinese market. Who could have possibly guess that Germany would do something that upset the rest of Europe? I mean, I can only think of like two times that's happened before. According to Germany's Federal Statistical Office, China has been Germany's main trading partner over the past six years. China is a very lucrative market, especially for German cars. According to a study published by the Rhodium Group, Germany makes up half of Europe's foreign direct investment in China. German giants like the car makers Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and chemical company BASF alone make up over a third of Europe's total foreign direct investment. Man, who would have thought that car companies that made vehicles for Nazis would be comfortable doing business with an authoritarian regime committing crimes against humanity? Next, you're gonna tell me Taco Bell is comfortable selling food to stone people at 1 a.m. Who can keep track of all this stuff? Germany's previous chancellor, Angela Merkel, has been a huge advocate for closer economic ties with China, just like with Russia. She warned against decoupling from China, saying they would be too damaging for Germany. Gee, if only they didn't put themselves in that situation in the first place. Working with China is the worst idea by a European since dipping fries in mayonnaise. Many were hopeful Germany would change under current German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, but will it? More after the break. Welcome back. Unless YouTube age restricted us like they did with our story on the UK. Talking about foreign policy is apparently too inappropriate for kids. When German Chancellor Olaf Scholz came in office, his administration gave some mixed signals. At first, he told Chinese leader Xi Jinping that he wanted to deepen economic ties with China without mentioning human rights or Hong Kong. Scholz also hoped the stalled EU-China investment deal that Merkel pushed for could take effect as soon as possible, 
even though it was delayed because of human rights concerns. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it seems Scholz got a bit tougher, at least at first glance. He said China's economic power shouldn't stop Germany from criticizing human rights violations in Xinjiang, and German companies should do more to diversify their supply chains and export markets. Germany's economic minister says Germany is drawing up a new China trade policy that would reduce dependency and vow no more naivete in trade dealings. The minister reportedly even considered new measures to make business with China less attractive. Because apparently, human rights violations weren't not attractive enough. Then again, that probably shouldn't come as a surprise, considering this is still Germany we're talking about. Meanwhile, Germany's foreign minister says Germany must learn from its Russia policy mistakes and take that into account with China. Sounds nice, but Scholz himself doesn't want to give up all that Chinese money. Ah, Western leaders and Chinese money. The most forbidden love story since Brokeback Mountain. Why can't I quit you? Scholz's answer isn't to reduce dependence on China, but to increase trade with other countries. According to him, decoupling from China is the wrong answer. Germany must continue doing business with China. In fact, he welcomes direct foreign investment from China, crediting China for saving many German companies from going bankrupt. So instead of breaking up with China, Scholz is saying they should stay with China, but also start seeing other people. Yep, I can't think of a single time when a couple decided to have an open relationship and it didn't lead to any other problems. You know this is a terrible idea because it's being praised by Chinese state-run media. A lot of people in Germany are worried. For example, the port of Hamburg is Germany's biggest seaport. It's considered the country's gateway to the world, but above all, it is a gateway to China, which is the port's largest customer. It also just so happens to be where Scholz used to be mayor. And I've been covering news long enough to know that when you hear someone say, it just so happens, it actually means because of course it is. Chinese shipping giant Costco was just given approval to buy a 24.9% stake in one of Hamburg Port's three terminals. Supposedly, the approved investment does not give Costco any say in management or strategic decisions. But the German foreign ministry, which has been hawkish on China, was so furious, it drew up a note documenting its rejection of the decision. An angry note, that'll show them. The note said the deal would allow China to control Germany's transportation infrastructure and increase Germany's dependence on a foreign adversary. Makes sense, given that Costco is a Hong Kong-listed subsidiary of the Chinese state-owned company China Costco Shipping Corporation. That company's subsidiaries provide direct support to China's navy. Costco already owns stakes in Europe's two largest ports at Rotterdam and Antwerp, controls the port of Piraeus near Athens, and has plans to expand at Duisburg, where the Ruhr and the Rhine rivers meet. So while Chinese money may not grow on trees, it does have deep roots. Scholl's own political coalition, the Greens and the Free Democrats, are divided over the sale because they see how much of a threat it would pose to critical infrastructure. And yet, an investigation by German regional public broadcasters found that Scholl's backed China, ignoring warnings from six federal ministries, including the Greens' vice chancellor. I guess love is blind after all. More after the break. Welcome back. Olaf Scholz insists that Germany will not decouple from China. In fact, under his chancellorship, German dependence on China is growing at a tremendous pace. In November, Scholz will visit China for two days with a business delegation, making him the first leader in the G7 to visit China since the start of the pandemic. It's no surprise that car manufacturers like Volkswagen are in his delegation. No one seems to be worried about reducing dependence on China anytime soon. Germany looks at China the same way alcoholics look at tequila. What's the problem? They just make me more fun. In fact, Germany's ramping up investments. Manufacturing is headed away from Europe to China. Germany's industries say a general containment of China or decoupling is not an option. This is dangerous because China has already shown that it will use leverage over Germany to push its agendas. According to the head of Germany's Federal Intelligence Service, there's still a lot of trust and naivety in Germany's business community. I guess besides China, 
Germany's other biggest ventures are buying swampland in Florida and helping out Nigerian princes. One of the challenges here is that maybe Germany won't get tough on Beijing if it invades Taiwan. Fortunately, not everyone in Germany thinks like that. Let's just hope Germany doesn't enable another authoritarian to start a world war. I mean it, Germany. Three strikes and you're out. And this episode is sponsored by Incogni. Whenever you do anything online, there's a huge number of companies that collect your personal data. Your name, your email, your home address, your credit card info, and lots more. That's why I signed up for Incogni. When I signed up in February this year, I discovered there were 76 data brokers that potentially had my private information. Since then, that number has grown to 134. And that means companies are buying and selling my personal info. Obviously, there's the moral outrage, but the bigger problem is that these companies can be hacked, and my data can be stolen by random people in China or Russia or even Germany. Data breaches are on the rise this year, which means my personal information is at risk more than ever. Fortunately, Incogni is working hard to force these companies to delete my data. Eight months after signing up, Incogni had already gotten my details removed from 58 of these data brokers, with 76 more in progress. And I didn't have to do anything after signing up. Incogni just handles it. So I recommend you get Incogni for yourself. Click the link below or go to incogni.com slash uncensored. The first 100 people to use the code uncensored will get 20% off. Get your personal data off the market with Incogni. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.